problems in the brain inside of the Japanese head. Two Sides of a Coin The World War II Propaganda of Dr. Seuss and Bill Malden A project by Esmita Pranjpe and Ashley Channel Bill Malden and Dr. Seuss were two cartoonists during World War II. Malden's cartoons caused a lot of controversy by triggering the wrath of General George Patton, but he received a strong positive response from his fellow soldiers. Meanwhile, Seuss had patriotic intentions, but his racist propaganda films provoked dismute among higher officers like General MacArthur. While both Malden and Seuss were instrumental in inciting a reaction to American involvement in World War II, their subject matter inspired different responses. While Dr. Seuss is widely known as a beloved children's author, many don't know of his audacious political work. Seuss was often ridiculed growing up as a third-generation German-American during World War I. These childhood struggles later promoted the harshness with which Seuss would depict the Nazis in his cartoons. Seuss began his career before World War II at the literary magazine Judge, but he drew the majority of his World War II propaganda for PM, a literary magazine that reported the events of the war to American civilians and soldiers. Often, instead of Dr. Seuss, the name used for children's books, he chose the pen name Ted to avoid recognition. From the start, Seuss made his stance clear. A Gallup poll established the fact that 70 to 85 percent of all Americans were strongly opposed to the war. And so was I. But I also believed that we had absolutely no choice in the matter, and had better by God get prepared for a war that sure as hell was going to sock us. Dr. Seuss, 1941 Malden also grew up enduring the effects of war at an early age, as his father was gassed in World War I and he was forced to take over his responsibilities. At the age of 17, he attended the Art Institute of Chicago, later becoming a soldier in the war. Malden drew Willie and Joe for the 45th News Division and in November 1943 moved to U.S. military newspaper Stars and Stripes. September of that year, Malden, a dedicated soldier, earned a Purple Heart after being wounded by a mortar shell. In 1945, he set up a drawing studio on the back of his Jeep where he would continue documenting the events of the war. Seuss expert Charles Cohen said, situated as they were in a block of newspaper texts, Ted's cartoons, which looked like nothing else in the hard news section, really grabbed readers' attention. Seuss's cartoons riled up American support for the war by encouraging anti-German sentiment. Once the United States became involved in World War II, Seuss wanted to use his talent to help the war effort. He worked for the Army making different types of war movies and animated films that were used to train soldiers. The U.S. Army employed Ted as project officer of the propaganda film Your Job in Germany, which was created before the conclusion of the war. In the film, Seuss played on an amplified anti-German attitudes that the U.S. Army promoted. We're up against German history. It isn't good. This book was written chapter by chapter, not by one man, not by one Führer. It was written by the German people. The Warner Brothers later adapted Your Job in Germany into Hitler Lives, which won the 1946 Academy Award for short documented film. It used nearly identical structure, sequence, images, and words as Seuss's original. We're up against German history. It isn't good. This book was written chapter by chapter. Not by one man, nor one Fuhrer. It was written by the German people. Your job in Germany was shown to generals as highly ranked as General Dwight E. Eisenhower, all of whom approved the film except General George S. Patton, who reportedly expressed his discontent by walking out and exclaiming, Bullshit! Bill Malden faced similar criticism from high-ranking officials whom he called brass hats in his works. According to artist Tom Engelhart, he liked the idea of working for Stars and Stripes. He said it had a really good editor who was not interested in putting out some kind of PR sheet to boost the troops' morale. Malden frequently took jabs at high-ranking officials in his cartoons. There's a classic cartoon where two officers are looking at a sunset. One of them turns to the other and says, What a beautiful sunset. Is there a view for the enlisted men? This was the classic Bill Malden. He loved poking fun at the leadership. George S. Patton took particular offense because he thought it was unflattering to the U.S. Army. Eisenhower orchestrated a meeting between the two in Luxembourg, and Malden would later describe their encounter in the book titled The Brass Ring. Now then, Sergeant, about those pictures you draw, those god-awful things you call soldiers, where did you ever see soldiers like that? You know goddamn well you're not drawing an accurate representation of the American soldier. You make them look like goddamn bums. No respect for the army, their officers, or themselves. 
You know as well as I do that you can't have an army without respect for officers. What are you trying to do inside a goddamn mutiny? Jules Pfeiffer, Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist and author, insisted that one might call this warfare what he was engaging in because what Bill did was show the GI in situations where he was dirty. He was filthy, in fact, but he was the fighter. Malden ended up helping GIs focus on a more humorous side of the war. This was not the case with Seuss, who caused more controversy than nostalgia with his awe-inspiring cartoons. Seuss is not shy about expressing his disapproval of America's appeasement and isolationism policy. His brusqueness continued in his film career with Our Job in Japan and Know Your Enemy Japan. Many people found Seuss's cartoons about the Japanese and Japanese Americans superfluously offensive and thought Seuss's racist attitude was his one major blind spot. Todd DiPastino, author of Bill Malden's biography, A Life Up Front, said, Malden's and Giesel's cartoons were very different in terms of their content and approach. Most readers today are shocked by the anti-Japanese racism of Giesel's wartime work. We're here to make it clear to the Japanese that their time has now come to make sense. Modern, civilized sense. That is our job in Japan. Unlike in your job in Germany, in which Seuss was ordered to create an accusatory image of Germans, Seuss did not have to promote a non-fraternization policy with the Japanese in our job in Japan. Thus, the abrasive tone of Seuss's new films about the Japanese was not well received. General MacArthur deemed our job in Japan's harsh view of the Japanese too inappropriate to be published. Brigadier General Frederick Osborne demanded Know Your Enemy Japan not to be released. Neither of the films would be seen for over 20 years. While Malin too faced disapproval from his superiors, the main reaction to his cartoons was that of support and adoration. One fan was Dwight E. Eisenhower, who revived Stars and Stripes in 1942 as an independent unit of his headquarters. Eisenhower believed that silencing Malden would dampen morale. And all through World War II, Bill Malden got G.I.s and grandmas and everyone in between to find a well-needed laugh when the grim realities of war didn't seem very funny at all. His mentor, Ernie Pyle, a famous American correspondent, described Malden's cartoons as terribly grim and real. The rest of the U.S. also received Malden's cartoons positively. His cartoons graced the cover of Time magazine in June 1945, and that same year he won a Pulitzer Prize for cartooning. Malden's memoir, Up Front, was a New York Times bestseller for 18 months and earned him $100,000. His skyrocketing popularity even led him to run for Congress in 1956, but it was unsuccessful. In 2002, Malden was hospitalized for Alzheimer's. World War II veteran Jay Grunfeld created a campaign among other veterans who were fans of Malden to commemorate Willie and Joe. Over 10,000 responses were sent to Malden's hospital bed in Newport Beach, along with many visits from old GIs. This campaign brought about the readership of a whole new generation. The Chicago Tribune even encouraged veteran readers to visit the ailing Malden and send him letters to repay him for his service. Bill Malden and Dr. Seuss were both cartoonists during World War II who created provocative illustrations about the U.S. war effort. Interestingly, the two artists generated nearly inverse reactions. Despite his filthy but honest portrayal of the American GI, Malden revived optimism among American soldiers, making him a hero until his death in 2003. On the other hand, Seuss works for the U.S. Army and American newspaper PM to inspire patriotism, but was met with conflict from civilians and soldiers alike due to his offensive content and tone. Or in a print political cartoon, it's what you're trying to say that makes it a political cartoon. All artists impact their societies, and both Dr. Seuss and Bill Malden shaped the American people's perceptions of World War II through the medium of political cartoons. But in the end, both artists, regardless of their distinctions, sparked conversation about the war among U.S. citizens.